Yes, indeed. It is called Lothric, where the transitory lands of the Lords of Cinder converge. In venturing north, the pilgrims discover the truth of the old words. Good afternoon or good night or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome everybody to my 100% walkthrough of Dark Souls 3. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am. And in this walkthrough, we're going to go over all the NPC quest lines along with get getting every single item possible in your first run through and getting the Dark Lord ending. Alrighty, now that that's all been said, let's go ahead and get to creating our character. First things first, we're going to name our character. It's going to be Mr. John Wayne naturally and then I went ahead and pre-made a character that way everybody doesn't have to watch me make a character let's go ahead and go over the classes real fast your knight class is going to be a class that is good for making a quality build you also have a mercenary class that's going to be good if you want to make a dex build. Your warrior class is going to be your strength build. And my personal opinion, if you're new to the game, 
you want to choose one of these three, either a knight, a mercenary, or a warrior. It's okay if you don't and you want to check out maybe a sorcerer or a pyromancer. Those are also really cool classes. So our next class is the Herald. They're going to focus more on faith, miracle kind of spells. And then the Thief, which is probably what I'm going to go with, which is more of like a luck build, or you can also make them into a quality build, which is what I'm going to do. We're going to be running a quality build. I do not recommend everybody else, if you're new to the game, do not choose the Thief. They start off with a dagger, and it is... I don't want to say impossible to use, but it is very difficult to use, especially if you're new. So go ahead and do yourself a favor and pick one of these three uh, starting classes. Next is your assassin, which is going to be a dex intelligence build. Your sorcerer is just going to be your magic and, you know, kind of sorceries and stuff like that. That's obvious. Your pyromancer is going to be faith and intelligence. So you're going to dual class intelligence and faith and use pyromancy skills. Your cleric is going to be a faith class, so it's going to focus on faith more than intelligence. And then you're deprived. Now, deprives are not a bad class to start out with, but you're going to want to be more of an experienced player if you're starting out with this class. You start out at level 1 and 10 across the board. So 10 luck, 10 faith, int, dex, strength, vitality, endurance, attunement, and vigor. Now, the reason why it would be good to start off with a deprived is if you're trying to make a certain build, like a quality build or something like that, or maybe even a, a luck build for like bleed and stuff, um, you would want like a deprived. We're not going to do that. We're going to start with the assassin or not the assassin. I'm sorry, the thief, which again, if you're new to the game, choose knight, mercenary or warrior. And now we're going to go over the burial gifts. Now the burial gifts are something that you're going to start out with, like an item that of your choosing that you're going to start out with. The first one is the life ring. It doesn't matter what class uh, you're starting out as, do not choose the life ring. You can get this ring at the very beginning of the game. Do not bother with it. We can also choose a divine blessing. A divine blessing is going to fully restore your HP and cure any ailments you might have, like if you're poisoned or toxic or something like that. You can also choose a hidden blessing, which is going to fully restore your FP, your focus points, which is like your, your mana, your magic. Uh, so if you want to choose that, feel free. Black bombs, uh, well, black fire bombs, I'm sorry. Black fire bombs are, well, fire bombs. You also get a fire gem. You can put that on your weapon and you can make it into a fire weapon if you choose. Sovereignless souls, which I usually use. Uh, you can get a soul of a nameless soldier. You can use that to gain more souls. Rustic gold coin, which will increase your item discovery. I feel like you should not use this because item discovery is just... A very niche thing unless you're trying to farm something um, I would not choose the rusted gold coin there's no reason to choose it cracked red-eyed orbs for those of you that like to invade early into other people's worlds you can choose the cracked red-eyed orb it'll allow you to invade another world obviously I just said that and the young white branch now a lot of people like to choose the young white branch because there's an npc later on in the game that will be shooting arrows at you and if you choose the young white branch he will not shoot arrows at you and he will be friendly automatically but we're not going to choose that because we're going to make him friendly by talking to him all right let's go ahead and choose the sovereignless souls and that's it so with all that being said, let's go ahead and start the game.
Welcome to the Cemetery of Ash, everybody. So right here, I'm not playing online. Normally, players can put uh, messages on the ground. These are all developer messages. They just show you how to play the game, like the basic controls. Like R1 is your light attack. R2 is your heavy attack. L2 is your parry. So parry is an interesting ability. If an enemy at the top of their attack goes to hit you, like soon as it's like right at the top of their attack, you hit L2, you can parry them and get a critical attack on them. Circle is to roll. So just use your left joystick and press circle. You can roll in any direction that you want, or you can just hit circle and do a back step. And then L1 is your block. Circle, if you hold it down, is to run. So if you want to run around. Now be very careful. The red bar is your HP. The blue, the blue bar is your FP, your focus points. And the green bar is your most important bar. This is your stamina. You only have so much stamina. And see how when I'm running, the stamina goes down. Once it runs out, if you keep trying to hit, you have to wait. All right, now that that's been said, I want to say one more thing to everybody. For those of you that started out as a knight or a warrior, you may be fat rolling, where you're rolling really slow. So what you're gonna have to do is come in into your inventory and hit square, or I think it's X on the Xbox, and take off either your helmet or your gloves or both to get your weight down to 68.0. You can see your weight ratio at the top right. If it's above 68.0, you will fat roll. And the reason you don't want to fat roll is it will prevent you from having invulnerability frames also known as iframes. And you want as many iframes as you can get in this game. It will help you dodge and negate damage. So if you're fat rolling and not rolling at the same speed as me, go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and try to parry this guy. Perfect. That's our first parry of the game. You have to make sure that when you parry somebody, you cannot move forward. You have to Stand still and then hit R1 right in front of them. So keep that in mind. We're going to veer off to the right here. We're going to grab ourselves a soul of a deserted corpse. Take this guy out here. And then right here is our Ash and Estes flask. So just like our Estus Flask heals our life, the Ashen Estus Flask will heal our FP. Now, I'm not using magic in this build, so we're going to be getting rid of that once we get to Firelink Shrine. For now, we're just going to be killing things. That was a good uh, way to show everybody a backstab. Unfortunately, I did not take um, advantage of that. I apologize. Take this guy out. Nice, we got a fading soul from him. Take him out. And then right here, take this guy out, but just know that this guy is going to run at you. Grab ourselves a backstab and another fading soul. Awesome. So over here, we are going to be facing a big crystal lizard. You want to be very, very careful if you don't feel confident enough fighting this enemy, just come back to it. Don't worry fight. Uh, don't worry about fighting him. There's also a really good way to cheese this enemy, and I will show everybody that um, in just a moment. But first, let's kill the big crystal lizard.
So if we're killing that really big crystal lizard, we get a tight knight scale. That is our first upgrade mat of the game. We can also come over here for a soul of an unknown traveler. Now let's backtrack just a little bit here. So if you are struggling with the big crystal lizard, just have him follow you on out here. And then you want to veer off to the right and bring him just over here to this ledge. And you can bait out his rolling attack. He'll ball up, like curl up in a ball and roll at you. And you just dodge to the left or the right. I prefer to dodge to the right if I do this. And he will yeet himself off the cliff there. Up at the top here, we have our first bonfire. We're going to light it. And we're going to sit at it. Once we sit at this bonfire, we get the emote rest. Wait for this guy to come over here. Take him out. And now we're going to learn how to jump. So what you want to do is you want to hold circle and you want to get... Sorry, they're freaking me out, making noises. I thought they were uh, running up on me. You want to hold circle, um, get a sprint, and then hit L3. So your left joystick, if you click it in, it will um, allow you to jump. It's also called L3, for those of you that may not know. So we're going to jump over, just like so. Get ourselves a tight night shard. Now we're going to hop down. Take out that enemy there. Take out this guy here. This guy here. This guy here. Man, all these fading souls. Awesome possum. And then take that guy out. Now there is a way down this way, but I prefer to come down over here and drop on top of that enemy. Now real quick before we drop down, if you press forward and R1, forward and R1, forward and R1, <laughs> thank you, you can get a kicking attack. So forward R1 at the same time, you can kick. It can be very finicky, so be careful or practice. You can kick his shield away and get yourself a free critical. So whenever an enemy holds up their, their shield, you can kick it and it will like push their shield away and you can get a free critical attack. Let's go ahead and pick up some fire bombs. By the way, I am going to forewarn everybody. This is going to be a pretty long episode because we got to get through the initial uh, tutorial area and then we have to talk to everybody in Firelink Shrine just to kind of get that stuff out of the way. Do bear with me if anybody is a veteran to the Soul series they can just skip over a lot of this stuff um, which I totally understand. Alright so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this coiled sword and as soon as we do we want to immediately start hitting Udix Gundir, so we can get some free hits on him. Pull the coiled sword out, and then just immediately start hitting him. And then back away, wait for a jumping attack, try not to get hit like me. I like to bait out a jumping attack, and then as soon as I can, I will get two to three hits. So just back up, wait for him to jump. And I am biffing this so hard. I'm usually not this bad at Udix. You 
You want to have distance. You can parry him, but I don't recommend it unless you're really good at parrying. Now he's going to turn into his Puss of Man form, which is actually a lot easier than his um, regular form. At least in my opinion. He looks intimidating, but he's really not that hard. Wanna step back. being a brave little toaster there so three hits step away three hits step away three hits step away or four if you if you know that he's gonna die in your next hit go ahead and take that hit so we get the coiled sword and we get our embered restored now whenever you're embered you'll have more health and you'll have more stamina and i believe you'll get more fp too i'm not sure on that uh, but also you can be invaded now here in the cemetery and in firelink you won't be able to be invaded but as soon as you get into the main game you will be able to be invaded if you're embered, so keep that in mind. For now, let's light this bonfire. And then we're going to rest at it, just to get our flasks back. And then what I'm going to do is come in here and take off our Souls of a Nameless Soldier and our Ashen Estus Flask. If we come over here, we can get ourselves a broken straight sword. It is a garbage weapon, but if you're trying to do a challenge run, feel free to use it. You can go ahead and yeet this guy right off the cliff. Go ahead and take these guys out really fast. There's two guys right here. Wow, all these fading souls. Really good to have uh, early in the game. So right here, we can hop down on this guy. Get a plunging attack and... I guess break the physics of this world. Come over here, get ourselves a Helmward Bone. Then we're going to backtrack just a little bit. Run up here. And then before we go through that archway, we're going to veer off to the left. And then if we look on this tree, we can see an item. If you grab that item, these guys right here are going to attack you. They're non-hostile as long as you don't grab that item. Jeez, we are getting so many drops. We get a cleric sacred chime. And apparently my guy wants to emote. It's one thing I dislike about uh, some of the older FromSoft games is they have a motion control for emotes and it just really messes you up sometimes. So that item right there is the East-West Shield. We're not going to go up there just yet. We're going to hold off for just a moment. Pick ourselves up an ember. Homeward Bone, 
So now we have two of them. We're going to one hand our weapon real quick. Grab an ember right here and then lock onto this dog. Hold your shield out because they bounce off shields quite a bit. But if you can sneak up on them, you get a free kill. Now, my advice to everybody is to come in here and take the coiled sword and put it right there in that basin. If you put it in the basin, you can rest at the um, bonfire and... Then if you die to the Swordmaster, you don't have to start all the way back there and fight your way through all these enemies. You can just come right back over here and you can give them another try. This is not an easy fight. If you don't feel confident enough to fight him, just come back when you're stronger and kill him. So see how he's holding his blade like that? That's what we want him to do because that is the easiest way to parry this guy. Kind of draw him back. If you can get him close to the archway of Firelink Shrine, that's good too. He he tricked me. He tricked me. If we die, that's okay. You know, it's not a big deal. Death is part of Dark Souls. Wow, that was really weird. Go ahead and get a few free hits if you can. Let's wait for him to do that. go. There's the sword master. So for killing him, we get his Uchi Katana, the master's attire, and the master's glove. For all you dex builds, the Uchi Katana is a great starter weapon. Actually, let's go ahead and put on the Master's Gloves as well. We're going to go ahead and talk to the Bonfire Keeper. Welcome to the Bonfire, Unkindled One. I'm a Fire Keeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The Lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. Ashen One, to be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen One, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. So this is how we level up. If we want to, we could level up right now. I'm not going to. I'm going to hold off on leveling up until the beginning of the next video. Farewell, Ashen One. May the flames guide thee. Let's go ahead and put the coiled sword in this basin here and turn it into a bonfire. And then we're going to come over here to pretty much Crestfallen. Let's talk to him. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of death. Well, you're not alone. We unkindled are worthless. Can't even die right. <laughs> Gives me conniptions. And they'd have us seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding thrones. 
But we are talking true legends with the metal to link the fire. We're not fit to lick their boots. Don't you think? <laughs> So for talking to him, we get the collapse emote. Now let's talk to this maiden here. A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. As is thy want, no? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Handmade, not maiden. I mean, I guess she could be a hit, uh, a maiden, but she's overall a handmaiden is what she's her name is or whatever. Shrine handmade. That. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk to her a couple more times. Ashen one, if my wares are not to thy satisfaction, bring me umbral ash. With ash, I'll fashion new wares. Is it not our sorry fate to sup on death? <laughs> Knowest thou of that soppy gossip? That cordial intrusion layeth the path to embers? And so thou art in need of a soapstone, ashen one. Then thy pockets will overflow with souls to trade to me. <laughs> so real fast, we're going to sell our fading souls. Soul of a deserted corpse. Soul of an unknown traveler. And the soul of a nameless soldier. We're going to go ahead and purchase a couple of items. The first one you're going to want to purchase, at least if you're playing online, you're going to want to purchase this. This is the white sign soapstone. What it'll allow you to do is put down your sign in front of a bonfire or maybe a boss door so that you can be summoned into other people's worlds, whether it's a friend or just a random person. And when you go into other people's worlds, if you help them kill the boss, you will also get a ember so that you'll be able to ember yourself. If you're not embered, once you do kill the boss and you go back to your world, you will become embered again. So let's go ahead and scoop that up. And we're also going to get the dried finger. Now the dried finger is very unique as it will allow you to summon in an extra player. Like if you're co-oping, if you want an extra fr friend to play with you, like maybe you have three friends, but you can only summon in two people, you can go ahead and summon in three instead of two. The only downfall with the dried finger is once you use it, at least for the time that you're in that area and you're not dead, like you don't die, you're going to have a higher chance of being invaded. So keep that in mind. Right here, we're going to scoop up this torch. Now, the torch isn't important to buy right now. I just like to buy it ahead of time because I use it a little later into the game. All right, let's go ahead and get out of here. Ashen One, be sure to bring more souls. <laughs> now we're going to talk to... Andre, the OG blacksmith of Dark Souls 1. Well, a newcomer, I see. I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Cinder, I trust. 
A toilsome journey, I'd wager. You'll require good arms. Let me smith you weapons. I am a smith. Such is my purpose. So, we're going to talk to Andre, and he's actually going to tell us about all of the stuff that we can do in his, uh, what, what he can do as a blacksmith. I'm sorry. <laughs> Words, am I right? So, I'll just give you a quick rundown. You can reinforce your weapon, which is just flat out leveling it up so it'll do more damage. You can also infuse a weapon, which will allow you to infuse uh, a weapon with different varieties of things like a refined gem is going to let your weapon scale with uh, dex and strength and uh, let me explain scaling to everybody real quick when you have a weapon you want to know what it's going to scale with you can look down on the bottom uh, right side of the screen just above attribute requirements is what uh, you need to be able to use that weapon so six strength uh, 12 decks to be able to use the dagger but just above that is the attribute bonus that is your scaling the higher that is the more damage you're going to be putting out with that stat so if it scales with strength and you have high strength you're going to do more damage with strength if it's a quality weapon which is what we're going to be playing with we're going to use a refined gym to make it a quality. Uh, we will scale with strength and dex. So we'll do more damage when we have strength and dex. And then so on and so on. Whether it's faith or sorceries or, and stuff like that. Okay. Repairing equipment. Obviously that's kind of self-explanatory. Something breaks. Repair it. Now allocating Estus. This is going to allow you to switch between if you want more Ashen Estus, maybe you're a Sorcerer or Pyromancer, you need more FP, then you're going to want a few more Ashen Estus. But I'm not using magic, so I'm going to go ahead and give myself more Estus and take away the Ashen Estus. So instead of having three, we'll have four. And then right here, we can reinforce our flask, but we don't have any Estus shards. We will be getting one here shortly. Let's go ahead and talk to Andre a few times. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large, but when overused, they'll eventually break. When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care, if you would. There are two ways to smith weapons. Simple reinforcement is one, and infusion the other. Reinforcement is straightforward. It strengthens a weapon without altering its property. Infusion is a more advanced form of smithing that infuses an element. Reinforcement requires titanite, and infusion requires gems. Bring the stones, and I'll do the smithing. It's my purpose, after all. In battle, your weapons are your only friends. Forge them well, and they won't let you down. So if we're talking to him, we're going to get the hoorah emote. Ma, ah, another matter. Infusing weapons with gems requires a special kind of coal. My humble coals won't be any use infusing more unusual gems. I know, it's an awful shame, but it's all I have. Oh, please don't give me that look. Believe it or not. I'm quite thin-skinned. <laughs> I believe there's one more bit of dialogue. If not, I'll skip through it. Oh, by the way, if you find any Estus shards, bring them here. They can be used to reinforce either of your Estus flasks. Without those flasks, you'd want for life or focus. And they'll always stay with you. 
Why not treat them well? Huh? <laughs> Pretty, be careful. I don't want to see my work squandered. <laughs> Okay, we have one more person to talk to, and then we're going to go to the top of Firelink Shrine. This guy is named Ludlith. All that unkindled, and a seeker of lords. I am Ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment, as I say. I linked the fire long ago, becoming the Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my charred corpse. This sad cadaver, no need to be coy. Have a closer look. No thou of our purpose. Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is, I became a lord of Cinder. I may be but small. But I will die a colossus. Now, now, do not be away over long. So we're going to go ahead and kill him. <clears throat> For killing him, we're going to get the skull ring. Skull ring is pretty unique as it will attract enemies to you. So if you're playing online and maybe a friend isn't as good as you, you could, and I don't mean that in a bad way, I'm just saying they're just newer to the game or just not as good. Um, you can put that ring on and attract enemies to you. So that way um, they'll have a better chance at succeeding in combat. Now Ludlith or Ludlith, however you pronounce his name, he's gonna come back to life. Uh, he's not even gonna hold a grudge on us for killing him. Let's go ahead and go to the top of Firelink Shrine. We're going to come over here. It's a tree that is a giant. Every now and then, after being invaded so many times, it has a chance to drop a seed of a giant tree. We're going to want one of those because we're going to drop it to an NPC eventually. Right here we can get a soul of a deserted corpse. Let's go ahead and use that. It gives me a great opportunity to show everybody something. Now, if I normally use um, a soul, it will kick me out of this whole inventory and then you have to come back into it and it's just very obnoxious. If you hit R3 on the controller, which is your right joystick, you click it in, it'll pop up to this and you can just go ahead and freely use the soul and it won't kick you out of the screen. I just wanted to show everybody that that way um, nobody's confused and like, oh man, I have to keep going back into this inventory because I want to use multiple souls. Um, it can be pretty obnoxious. So right here, we're going to exploit uh, this tree with a jump. We're going to run up it. And soon as we run up this way, we're going to veer off to the right. Like we're going to jump off to the right and try to land on this lip. Now I probably won't get this my first try. And if I don't, then I will cut the video and, oh man, that was so close. Uh, I will cut the video and come back when I do make it. Never mind. Second try. Right here we get some homeward bones. Hopefully nobody else struggles that long on that jump. It is difficult. It is not an easy jump to make. Don't get disheartened. Keep trying. You will make it. Right over here we have our first crystal lizard. 
at least one that's not trying to kill us. For killing it, we get a Twinkling Titanite. Now we can turn right around. We're going to backtrack just a little bit. We passed up an archway earlier. We're going to go through this archway. Should be right here. Now be very careful. You don't want to fall off these rafters because then you're going to have to get your souls back. And that's not an easy feat because if you die and your souls are left on the ground, uh, you lose all those souls. You do not get them back. So don't fall off here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop a couple of items to Pickle Pea and Pumperum. For anybody that's played Dark Souls 1, you will, or even 2, you will remember these type of birds. Thankfully, <laughs> Dark Souls 1, you had to exit the game, come back in just to get the item. Now you just have to leave the item and then they'll give you an item. Now be very careful exiting out of this menu. Don't press circle too many times. You don't want to backstep off the rafters. I've done it before. Uh, it's, <laughs> oh man, it, it's heartbreaking. So we get a large uh, Titanite shard for dropping the firebomb and now we're going to drop a homeward bone so we get a call over and we also get the iron bracelets for dropping the homeward bone we're going to come over here grab ourselves an estus shard and then we're going to face this way if you look down you can see all the thrones converging this way we want to go this way hit that wall it's our first illusory wall again try not to fall off the rafters come over here open up this chest and we get the covetous silver serpent ring this ring is so amazing and having it at the beginning of the game is a must-have in my opinion what it does is for every kill of an enemy, you're going to get more souls back. So right here, you can hop down straight down. Um, as long as you have enough health, you shouldn't die. Or if you're really good, you can hop straight through that window. Not that I'm really good. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, by the way, this is a developer message right here as well. See, the, the bonfire will deliver the to Lothric. For those of you that were like, oh man, how do I get to Lothric? What do I do? I got to Firelink Shrine. Which is understandable because it doesn't tell you what to do. No Souls game has ever uh, been one to hold anybody's hand. Um, it's just saying, go to the bonfire, rest at it. And once you rest at it, you'll be able to travel. And you'll be able to travel to the high wall of Lothric. Now, we're not doing that in this episode. What we're going to do is go over to Andre. We're going to upgrade our Estus. Now we'll have ah, five. Good, wasn't he? Pretty be careful. Like that. So it says that we have four Estus right now, even though that we upgraded it. As soon as we rest at the bonfire, we will have five Estus flasks. So don't let that uh, trick you. So right here, I think, is a good spot to end the video. I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the first episode in my 100% walkthrough of Dark Souls 3. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world. Mr. John Wayne, signing off.